Remember when you were six years old and you went looking for four-leaf clovers with a bunch of other kids? Remember how the sun felt warm on your back? How the grass tickled your feet? Remember thinking you wanted to be the first kid to find a four-leaf clover? Why weren't you happy just to find all the three-leaf clovers that filled that grassy spot? What is the big deal about that fourth leaf anyway? Could it be that there's something not standard, typical, or normal about finding a four-leaf clover? The odds of finding one are one in 10,000. Just as we value the unique difference of a four-leaf clover, so too we have the opportunity to value the unique difference of each individual person. We have the opportunity to create a new normal that's about each person being who they uniquely are. We know we're pack animals, and as such, it's our instinct to be normal so that we fit in the pack and will be safe and survive. We can think of this normal as a box, a normal box. Over time, we've come to realize that the normal box is no longer adequately serving its functions. It's getting tired. So we've done some work on the box. We've tried redecorating it. We've tried moving it around. We've even tried redesigning the box, thinking that a relocated, redesigned box might be able to adequately serve its function. But it's like this. We've got this shoe box, and it's such a great container for shoes. But there's this basketball, and no matter how hard we try, we can't get the basketball to fit in the shoe box. We end up missing who's here in our present day world when we rely on the normal box, a container that's inadequate for basketballs. What we need now is a container that can hold both shoes and basketballs. We need a space expansive enough to include everyone. We are creating the new normal, a normal defined by each person being who they uniquely are. By definition, we live in a neurodiverse world. That is a world filled with people whose brains and nervous systems function in a wide diversity of ways. The ways that people's brains and nervous systems function, including how their perceptions function, those are called neurocognitive functions. Robert Frost ends his poem, The Road Not Taken, with two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. When we separate or depart from the normal, standard, typical road, we could say we diverged from that road. Getting back to the normal box. If your neurocognitive functions fall within the dominant societal standard of normal, you are considered neurotypical. And hopefully, at least some of the time, that normal box will be adequate. Now, if your neurocognitive functions significantly diverge from the dominant societal standard of normal, you are considered neurodivergent. A basketball for which the shoebox is inadequate. I am talking about this because I have long been a basketball. <laughs> and I have experienced what it's like to not fit in the normal box in cultures and communities that were more expansive, where I was included and valued in the pack. I am neurodivergent. When I was a kid, I spent part of elementary school at a school on a military base where I was treated as a unique individual and a valued member of the community. Then I attended conventional public suburban schools where my unique differences 
were simply considered problems to be solved, where I was consistently pressured to at least try to act like a pair of shoes, and where my learning differences, they were simply considered deficits. In high school, this played out as a severe depression, stemming from misunderstandings around my dyslexia and dysgraphia. Instead of being given the strategies, tools, and environments I needed to use my uniqueness well, I was shunned and treated like I was lazy, unambitious, and stupid. There was one correct way to look and act and function because that normal box was inadequate for this basketball, I began to believe that I was broken and unworthy. If it wasn't for a teacher who believed in me and my unique differences, I most likely would have taken my own life and not been here with you today. It wasn't until I became a special education teacher working with brilliant, unique students, that I began to understand how to use my uniqueness, the strategies, tools, and environments I needed. I began to think of this uniqueness as superpowers. I have seen so much suffering caused by trying to get basketballs to fit into shoeboxes. Brilliant, kind, dedicated, well-intentioned people guided by systems and policies who just keep trying to teach or train or cajole basketballs to fit in shoeboxes or who realize that normal box is no longer adequate and so they keep moving it around and redecorating it. With all that effort focused on the normal box, they essentially become blinded to the superpowers that exist outside of it. And everyone ends up frustrated, defeated, and usually not successful. I created my company, Aligned Education, because I repeatedly observed this. Brilliant, kind, dedicated, well-intentioned teachers, counselors, parents, and service providers who profoundly care about neurodivergent people, who are not experiencing the joy and success all that care, talent, and dedication warrant. I partner with them to use strategies, tools, and environments to build on the strengths inherent in unique differences to teach people how to use superpowers well, to share how to use superpowers well. If it takes a village to raise a child, it takes an entire culture to create a new normal. No one of us can do this alone. Adding together the percentage of the world population with just six of the recognized forms of neurodivergence, at least 30% of the world population is neurodivergent at any given time. That is a lot of basketballs for which the shoebox is inadequate. We know that the world needs neurodivergence. As a quote attributed to Albert Einstein says, we cannot solve problems using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. We literally need outside of the normal box thinking to address the big global issues that normal thinking has created. There are no broken, unworthy people. Simply a dominant societal standard of normal that is inadequate for unique differences, for superpowers, for basketballs. When we learn to recognize our unique differences, our superpowers, the superpowers in others, and the strategies, tools, and environments to use them well, we create a world 
filled with infinite possibilities. We create a pack that includes both shoes and basketballs. We create a new normal that's about each person being who they uniquely are. When the larger culture adopts this new normal, there will be no more throwaway people. Because when someone's a member of your pack, they're not throwawayable. There will be many more brilliant people. Because when you're being who you uniquely are, and you're recognizing others being who they uniquely are, we each show up as we brilliantly uniquely are. There will be so much more joy and success as we learn to utilize the strategies, tools, and environments individuals need to use their uniqueness well. And there will be so much more love as we each learn to be our unique best selves. It transforms our relationships from being about control and fitting in to being about authenticity. I challenge you to be your unique best self so that you can access your superpowers and be the superhero that you truly are. I challenge you to recognize, support, and celebrate the unique differences of others and I challenge us to be our fully present best selves, shifting our focus from enforcers of that normal box to literally becoming the space expansive enough to include everyone, making the choice to create a new normal filled with more authenticity, uniqueness, and love.